Thank you very much, Bruno, um, and, uh, and welcome to this first session of today. Uh, if we can get it on the screen, then we'll jump straight into it. And it's, um, it's basically the first session uh, on data-driven decision-making, the future of information management. Um, so my name is Magnus Rasmussen. I lead the IM team here in Rome for the logistics cluster, and I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Senior IM Officer Silvia Lopez, who's sitting in Spain today, uh, and will join in for a few slides as well. So looking forward to this, uh, to this opening session, um, we asked a, a quick question, a quick poll here in, in, uh, in the opening hours. Uh, so perhaps, Julie, can you share that, Menti, just to have a, a quick view? And the, the question was basically, uh, what do you find to be the key obstacle for utilizing data for decision making? Um, and it's very, very small, I can see in writing, but the, the choices were basically I and my team does not have the skill set uh, or capacity needed to extract conclusion from our data. I see a few went with that one. The quality of our data is not sufficient. That's quite a substantial uh, amount. We have the same issues here from time to time, so you're not alone on that one. Um, the other one is I don't have access to the data I think I need. Um, then we go on to, I don't know where to find the data I think I need. <laughs> and the last one is using data for decision making. Uh, I don't even know where to start. We have a few of those as well, and, and um, it's not an, an uh, unusual scenario to come over. So, uh, so, so very much looking forward to, to engaging all of you in, in this discussion. Uh, a few house rules today. Um, the Zoom account is allowing you to unmute if we go into discussion later on uh, following the presentation. The chat is open, uh, so any questions throughout will be answered at the end of the presentation. And then we'll wrap up with a quick uh, mentee at the last slide, also asking you a question to sort of uh, engage you more in a discussion after this presentation. This being said, let's, let's jump straight into it. and. Um, Basically, uh, today's session uh, will we'll ask the following questions and discussions. You know, what is data-driven decision making? I'll get back to that in a second. What is our current approach to data analysis and information management within the logistics cluster? Uh, the future role of information management, sort of collecting and transforming data to facilitate informed decision making for more effective operations. So again, uh, making this information available to our partners and in the end uh, creating um, easier access to the humanitarian response. Going back to the first point, what is uh, data-driven decision making? And it's, in a few words, you can say that it's basically the process of making organizational decisions based on data and facts. Uh, we are in a, in a world of logistics where we have a lot of experience a lot of decisions are made on intuition and observations. Uh, and uh, I have great colleagues around the world. Uh, what we would like is to support them in, in making the decisions made on data, uh, historical, current, uh, present data, but also uh, trend analysis, etc. So that's, that's our mission uh, for 2021, to start that journey. Uh, we'll then look at you know, what our current approach to data analysis, uh, looking again at what we do. So um, yeah, let's, let's get on to the next one. Uh, the logistics cluster, and this is just a quick one uh, on what we do. You know, we're responsible for coordination, information management, and for facilitating access to common logistics services to ensure an effective and efficient logistics response takes place in humanitarian emergency missions. So um, looking at the IM role in this context, uh, the inf information management team uh, within the logistics cluster is embedded in all work streams. Uh, that's both a curse and a blessing. Uh, a curse in the sense that we are tasked with just about everything. Um, the blessing is that we also come in contact with data and information on all levels. So it's a unique position for us as a team. Uh, and something that we are we are working to improve our approach to. Let's let's move on to the next one, where we will look at the structure of the IM teams in the logistics cluster. Um, I'm representing HQIM, uh, just to use another abbreviation, uh, and our role here is to uh, facilitate the access between the field uh, and the, the wide humanitarian community. We do a lot of reporting. We do few, uh, some analy analysis, but a lot of focus is on reporting and supporting operations when they need it. 
A very important aspect is also guidance in terms of uh, standardized approaches to how we communicate and how we use and collect data. And this is where it gets a bit interesting because then we have our amazing colleagues in the field who are doing the tough work, uh, in my own words, uh, and they collect and analyze uh, data for, on an operational level. Uh, but what they often do is that they refer to the information management guide, uh, which actually comes from us. If you go to that document, it's a very good document, but it has a lot of focus on language uh, and communication. What you'll see is that it has very little focus on data uh, and data standards. So it's definitely something that we as a, as a unit or, a, or uh, an entity need to look deeper into. So uh, a lot of the work will sit with HQ, and that's basically how we see, or that's one of the sort of key aspects of, of decision, uh, data-driven decision-making in the sense that this change needs to come from a centralized point. Uh, it cannot come from Central African Republic or Burkina Faso. No matter how good they are, they don't have the connection with all operations. So it, that role sits with us and responsibility as well, uh, and we look forward to supporting our, our colleagues in the field. Let's go on to the next slide. Uh, and this is just to give you all an overview of the work uh, that was done in 2020. Uh, I think what I would like to highlight from this map is basically that each symbol here represents multiple data sources. Uh, so now when I look at a map like this, I look what information can I extract. And just to give you a few insights to this map, uh, when you see the, the warehouse or the trucking symbol, it means that we're facilitating access to storage or, or transport. Uh, all of this information is stored in our system called RITA, which is the relief and tracking application of the logistics cluster. All of this information is usually used for uh, reporting uh, and to some extent also for analysis, but that's one of the aspects that we would look very much into in 2021 is, is defining key KPIs for, for our uh, work uh, in terms of warehousing and, and trucking and transport. When you see the I, it basically means that, uh, yeah, let's just go back quickly, <laughs> no worries. Uh, when we look at, uh, when you see the I, it means that we're doing information management. And as you can see, we're present in, in just about every operation. Uh, and it basically means that we're there to collect information from partners, but also to partners, uh, on everything from access constraints to, to storage capacity, et cetera. Um, but also to do ad hoc analysis on fuel prices, fuels access, etc. Uh, this is a very, uh, these ad hoc requests are coming more and more frequently, but we are not currently doing it in a, in a structured manner where we have the same methodology across, across all operations. So an interesting point, when you see this point, for us it's a data source or multiple data sources. Yeah, let's go to the next one. And for this one, it basically describes the, the products that we produced in 2020 from, a, from an information management perspective. Just over 2,000 items published last year. Uh, quite impressive work. Uh, a substantial amount of resources was put into this. I think what, what, uh, what's common across all these documents is that its current format, it's, uh, the data inside, it's, it's all static, right? So we're putting information into Word documents, Excel sheets, infographics. Uh, and I normally say uh, Word documents uh, and infographics is where data goes to die because it basically means that it, it makes it incredibly difficult to extract and use for, for future analytics. So what we envision for 2021 and with our new website is that all of this will become searchable uh, and we'll be able to extract this information for, for our analysis and, and give back to the partners and give them the insights that they need. Yeah, let's, let's go to the next one. So I'll hand this over to, to Sylvia and just uh, sharing a few of the challenges that we see uh, for IAM in the humanitarian context. Sylvia, over to you. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, good morning to everyone. So as uh, Magnus said, I'm trying to show a little bit of the of this picture of the challenges that I am officers we face when we work on humanita in humanitarian context. I think that most of the challenges are extensive to, to the whole humanitarian field and not only to logistics. 
And uh, if some of you are uh, working I am, you may feel uh, the same uh, feeling when reading some of them. So for instance, uh, one of them, I'm not going to go through all of them, but one of the challenges that we always face is the, the growing number of templates. So sometimes we try to track information and we end up handling six, seven or eight Excel sheets and on the field and it becomes very uh, difficult to have all the information updated or on the other side, we can end up with the 200 columns uh, Excel file. At the same time, uh, one of the challenges that we have is uh, today we have a growing number of platforms and systems that we use. And at the same time, we, we have to do a lot of reporting that it requires a lot of effort and takes a lot of our time. And um, I think one of the key challenges that we also face is uh, how can we communicate to our partners, our uh, information users, the, the, the information that we have available? Because sometimes we put a lot of effort in, in producing some IM products or documents or dashboards, and, and we see that in the end, not a lot of people are using them. So I think that's one of the, of the challenges. And then, and I think it's, it's very related to how to work gathering and uh, gathering, compiling and visualizing data. So it has to do with that one on the right corner, which is the, this trade-off that we face between setting the standards uh, or uh, a more structured way of gathering information when we have so many different operations or emergencies. So how are we going to be flexible to gather information, but at the same time to, to have this information structure in a way that allows us to, to play with the data, to visualize data, to, to make historical analysis, to compare information between emergencies over the years, etc. So this is also one exercise that we, we need to do all the time to learn from the best practices on the field, but at the same time to learn from our own mistakes, uh, like developing 100 Excel, Excel sheets. So please go to the next slide. And so this is just um, an idea of how can the data journey start. So um, when we produce information, we, we have the, this double purpose. One of them is to identify what information is key and for running an operation to, to make decisions in an emergency. So it has to do with identifying those needs from the, from the field. And at the same time, how to provide this information, but not only providing that information, it's the, the tool that we use to provide that information. So it can, it, it can suit the, the needs of information from our user. So in this sense, and we can start just mapping through informal inf consultation, what are these information needs? The next step would be to, uh, on a more structured way to, to, to ask to the people on the field. And I think in that sense, we, we as the logistics cluster, we have a privileged position with a lot of partners and ourselves we've present on the field to, to know what are the main needs in terms of information that we have. And once we have identified those, those, those needs, one of the key elements are is what that, that information piece that we need, how is it translated into data pieces? So for instance, just to give an example, if for our daily operations, it's very important to us to, to know the fuel prices. What does it mean in terms of data to talk about the fuel prices? Is it the average daily uh, fuel prices? Is it the daily prices for each gas station in one specific country? So we have to translate those information needs into the a small data piece that we need to work with. So at the same time, we go through this, uh, through this path and depending if we are able to gather that information, maybe we are already gathering that information, but we need to think if we are providing the, the, the final product in the, in the best way, or maybe we, we need to use a different tool. Maybe this infographic is not good to show or to provide the information. Maybe we need to prepare a dashboard because it's, the, it's more suitable for, for the needs, et cetera. And maybe we are going to find out that some of those needs we cannot, we, we don't have access to that information. So we, we cannot gather that information, but we may think um, we, we have to look who, who other actors may be already doing that work. And that's the, it bring, opens the door for partnerships. We, we, we have, 
we can develop tools to pull that information from other actors, etc. And then the purpose is to bring everything together to identifying and fulfilling those needs in the in the most suitable way. Um, and transforming and playing all the time with the data and the information, going uh, dividing all that information into data pieces, and then with the data pieces, constructing all the information. Over to you, Magnus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting exercise to run through, um, and it's definitely something we will do across operations not uh, as a general one, but looking at, at specific needs, uh, you know, is are we actually capturing this information? If we're not asking the questions, where can this information be found? I think what's, what's critical here, or, or my hypothesis, is that, that much of this information will be available, not from us perhaps, but then from the private sector, from the LET community, etc. So in that sense, it's not about whether the information is there or not. I, I almost refuse to say that it's not there. It's about asking the right people for that information. Whether they will give us access, that's a whole other discussion to be had. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that we'll find most of the information that we need if, if we look the right places. Let's, let's have a look at the next slide um, and, um, and continue our conversation here. So the vision and, and what we're looking for in 2021 is basically uh, centralizing information for easy access. And what you'll see here in, in, this, uh, in this slide is basically bringing together some of the key tools. Uh, Bruno just mentioned LogIE, uh, which will be a key feature uh, in the operations pages going forward. Uh, we're working to integrate that feature onto each operation that we're working with, uh, giving them sort of daily insights to, to everything from access constraints to warehouse locations, etc. Uh, we have the, uh, the old, uh, the grand old uh, LCA, Logistics Capacity Assessment, which is already connected to LCAs, which basically means that the information that you might need for a country can be found in LogIE now, uh, because we, we have that data uh, integration between the two. Um, we also, uh, Kelly and the team there is working to update the Logistics uh, Operational Guide uh, and, uh, and with our new platform, we'll be able to make it much more easy and searchable uh, and not a static documents uh, as in the past. Uh, the same goes with the gaps and needs analysis, which is often the foundation of our operation. Uh, and here, our, our vision is also to extract those key gaps uh, and put them into more sort of long-term analysis in terms of uh, are we actually fulfilling the gaps that we present in the beginning uh, of the DNA. So um, a lot of interesting things, but the whole thing and, and um, the whole vision for us as an information management team for, for the future year is, is to make this site the one-stop shop for, for all of this information. Let's, let's go to the next slide and I'll share with you a bit on, on how we sort of envision this. We, we see this as data layers, right? Uh, Sylvia presented it quickly before saying that the information is available. If we don't have it in log IE or in the LCA or in the gaps and needs analysis, uh, the lead agency for the logistics cluster is World Food Program that has significant uh, amount of, of analytics in terms of market prices uh, and, and other partnerships that can provide information that we need. We need to bring that in there to layer that information and, and give it to, uh, to our operations, but more importantly to the partner community. Uh, so that, that's the role of us as an IM team to facilitate that access. Uh, we will do our very best to combine all of this into operational analysis. I'll give you an example of that in a minute. Uh, and then secondary information. This could be anything from, from historic weather patterns uh, showing uh, what we could see as, as possible uh, flooding scenarios for the coming year, etc and presenting it to you at the beginning of the year, not one month before the rainy season, but actually giving you a full uh, year uh, of forecast or, or, or predictive analysis. Let's, um, let's jump on to the next slide and I'll give you a quick example. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a slight dirty uh, um, slide here, but it, it gives you an indication of what we see as, as could be the sort of key uh, analytics. Uh, or predictive analytics that we would like to offer. Um, I'm just giving you a timeline here for a year. So that could be something that we would see for Burkina Faso or Central Africa Republic, that we every year are actually able to give uh, partners and the, the, the cluster operation these analysis. Uh, 
clearly indicating the, the weather pattern. So precipitation, uh, it goes up from May to October. Uh, warehouse usage uh, reaches close to maximum capacity uh, in the same period. We could also see fuel prices. These are just data layers, but these are all important insights that we wish to share with our community uh, for them to make the informed decisions to uh, make their operations more efficient. So basically learning from historical data to forecast operation management, bringing together different sources of information. So we have weather information, we have warehouse usage, we have fuel prices, we can even put layer that with, with topography maps of, of the region and show uh, possible flooding areas, overlaying that with access constraints maps and, and by, that, by doing so providing analysis. Another one before I, I jump to the last slide is that uh, we will provide analysis like this uh, and that's, that's sort of the vision for us, but we will also make large part of this data ready and available for everybody to, uh, to make use of if they wish to produce their own um, analysis. Um, one of the visions is that we, we will have an API where you can basically tap into this uh, and make use of it as, as you feel like. Let's, uh, let's wrap up the next one. This is predictive analytics, uh, which was what I just presented before. And this is, these are some of the areas that we would like to, to look at. Um, and I'm going to open up shortly in a, in a menti poll, just asking. Uh, but basically, you know, fuel prices could be interesting. Inflation, is that logistics? Well, it, it, it affects our ability to procure uh, services underground. So in some way you can say that. Uh, it's a ready and available data source that we can feed in. Whether we should provide that or not, that can be discussed uh, on an operational level. Access constraints, freight prices, warehouse capacity, uh, and, uh, and weather patterns. All information ready and available. It's not that information is not out there. It's about how we make it uh, easy for consumption for our partner community. Yeah, so that was a bit of our grand vision for, for 2021. Um, I'm going to put the next slide on if you, if, if you could please. Yeah, so we're just asking basically in the last poll here just to open up the conversation, what can, key information uh, would make your organization or operation more effective? And uh, I think that's a, an interesting one. So uh, please share your views here. Um, and I, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this presentation of, of how we see information management changing from being more focused on reporting and communication. We will still continue to do that. That is in many ways our bread and butter. Uh, however, we need to be able to extract the information from those information and data that we use on a daily basis to provide uh, you, the partner community, with much better analytics for, for informed decision making. So thank you very much. I don't know if, if we had any interest on this, uh, on this poll yet, but uh, yeah, please jump in there if, if you feel like it. Otherwise, um, let me see if I have questions. I know we're running a bit short on time, uh, but we'll do our very, very best um, to, to answer if there's any questions on this. I, otherwise, I hope you found this, uh, I hope you found the, um, the presentation interesting. I think we have the first question coming in. Let me have a look here. To our very high tech WhatsApp group. Um, still not coming through. Yeah. Mm -mm. Question? Hmm? Okay. Just a second. Apparently we have a question that I can't see because I don't have access to the chat. Uh, sorry, I can read out my question then. Yeah, please, please do. Uh, thanks for the presentation. You mentioned a couple of slides ago that you will have an API that will make the data accessible that you're collecting. So is that yeah. already available or is it forthcoming? So um, I think a good example of that was actually the SEPU that we did uh, last year where we were talking about access constraints map for the, um, for the, the COVID uh, response uh, and we had an API developed for that. Uh, it's not on the, on the site yet but it will be developed, uh, it is developed as being part of the new website that goes live. Uh, <laughs> I should have said yesterday but it will go live with a newsletter that, that uh, is coming out on Wednesday. I think we're launching it tomorrow as I understand from our, our tech savvy leads 
but yes, the idea is that we will have APIs to feed into this information. Over. Thank you. Yeah. Menti. Okay, let's have a look at the Menti then and put it up there. Wow, it's uh, it's slightly small from my side, but let's uh, see if I can see it. Uh, <laughs> what key information would make your operations uh, organizations more effective? <laughs> Consolidation options. What do we say here? Uh, transport lead time. What does it say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a very, very interesting. Can I ask when you say transport lead time? I see that as one being one of the the bigger ones. Uh, who who put that in there? Okay, it's okay. Um, yeah? Hi, Magnus. Yes, Nimisha here. Yes, I had put in that one. Um, it would be essential to know uh, at least the, the transport time from uh, the major port to, say, um, a disaster location or identified potential um, locations of disaster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a, that's a very very good question. And for me, when I hear something like this, I I, I jump straight to our uh, LET, the logistics emergency team. Uh, um, who are sort of partners of, of some of the, the bigger uh, transport organizations on a global level. Uh, and I'm sure uh, with a bit of advocacy from our side, we would be able to extract information like this and make it available. Um, I think everybody had a container stock at some point that they didn't know when to arrive. So uh, very interesting to um, very interesting uh, question there and uh, definitely something that we could uh, we could put in as a as a key indicator uh, in an onset, uh, in a sort of sudden onset emergency. Thank you very much for that. That's a good one. Uh, airport operating status. Yeah, I think that's an essential one. And I think we actually made use of it uh, as one of the indicators during the SEPU last year, where we had sort of the insights on, on the various airports or entry points to a country. Uh, and I definitely see that being one of the, the informations that we will be able to share uh, going forward. I see warehousing here as well. It's one of the areas we have a lot of focus on right now because it's clear that we're not able to give more or less live indications of, on warehouse status across the country, even though we're present in those uh, warehouses. So that's definitely something we're looking to optimize, but it's a very good one here. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, clean data. <laughs> yeah, clean data is, I think, is the dream of all. Uh, I think uh, just to address that one, um, I think it starts from the top, and for us, it starts with HQ. Uh, although each uh, country office is an individual operation here, uh, and we only advise, if we don't provide standards to start with, then it's difficult for to ask for clean data in the end. So I think the responsibility for clean data in the beginning it, it's, it sits with us. If we then provide, uh, if we then provide these um, templates or, or data entry points, then we can start pointing fingers afterwards. But it's difficult to to uh, complain about clean data from our side when we haven't been able to to standardize the way we collect it. But very good point. Yes, thank you. Yeah, do we have more sensible ones? I'm just looking around here. Okay. I think we're almost uh, over time. Uh, if there's any questions, just jump in there in, in the chat or uh, just unmute yourself. Uh, otherwise, I think we're about to check out and make room for the next session. Yeah? Thank you very much for your time.